Welcome. In today's video, we'll introduce you to profitable VWAP trading strategies tailored to different market stages. Stay tuned until the end when we dive into trade entry triggers. Take a look at this NASDAQ chart, can you notice the opportunities? Imagine how many trades you'll be able to make once you learn VWAP strategies and add them to your trading toolkit. Also, check out these perfect reactions to yesterday's VAL and VAH. We covered the key concepts in part 1 of this series, Full Guide to VWAP, so we recommend watching that first. In today's lesson, we'll build on that foundation, assuming you're already familiar with the basics and terminology. Let's quickly remind you that the success of any trading strategy improves significantly when combined with other tools for identifying support and resistance, like order blocks or additional indicators. And of course, don't trade blindly, always wait for a trigger or confirmation before entering a trade. In these strategies, we rely on the daily VWAP. This is because many futures traders prefer intraday trading, closing their positions before the market closes. However, even better results can be achieved using higher timeframes in weekly or monthly VWAP. Before we dive into the strategies, it's important to talk about market phases. Peter Steidelmayer's original market profile identified six types, but we use only two, trending and non-trending. Keep in mind, the market doesn't stick to just one phase throughout the day, these phases often alternate. Why is it so important to distinguish between trending and non-trending phases? The answer is simple. If you use a trend-following strategy during a non-trending phase, most of your trades will hit stop losses. On the other hand, relying on support and resistance levels during a trending phase can lead to mostly losing trades. Non-trending phases are characterized by the value area and the POC staying relatively stable. These phases are often called flat or sideways markets. They typically occur on days before bank holidays, Mondays, or just before major economic announcements. That's why it's essential to check the economic calendar, which you can easily find on the main dashboard of the ADAS platform. Pay attention to the currencies or markets that have a significant impact on the asset you're trading. For US indices, for example, watch for FOMC reports, NFP, GDP, or CPI releases. You can recognize a non-trending phase by the POC line staying mostly flat or with a minimal slope. These phases usually come with low volatility and frequent price movements back to the central POC line. During this phase, you can trade reactions to VAH and VAL, such as price deviations from VWAP, support and resistance levels, liquidity grabs, and similar strategies. In non-trending markets, keep in mind that a flat VWAP tends to pull the price back toward it. On trending days, the value area shifts, and you'll notice that the POC and the initial price deviations have a clear slope throughout the trending day. The central VWAP line isn't flat, and on such days, it's best to trade in the direction of the VWAP slope. The steeper the slope, the stronger the trend. Instead of focusing on support or resistance levels, your aim should be to enter the trend and ride the momentum. Look for moments when the price retraces, bounces, and then resumes its original direction. Trending days are usually driven by major macroeconomic news or reactions to significant market events. During these periods, a sloping VWAP acts as a reflection of price movement. This first strategy works best during flat days when the VWAP line has a little slope or doesn't have it all. The goal is to open trades at the first price deviation and close them at the POC. While you could aim for the opposite end of the value area, closing trades at the POC is generally more reliable. On these days, both long and short positions can be profitable, as you're betting on the price returning to the point of control. For even better results, combine this strategy with liquidity grabs. For example, if swing highs and lows form during the Asian session, it's likely that when the price breaks out of this range, it will move out of the value area and collect liquidity before returning to the POC. At first glance, a non-trending day might seem uneventful and boring, but it's ideal for most traders due to its simplicity. Plus, the market is in equilibrium around 80% of the time, meaning the value area stays relatively stable. Following a period of consolidation, when significant macroeconomic news hits, the market usually shifts into a trending day. You'll recognize this by the slope of the VWAP line and the movement of the first and second price deviations. When this happens, it's time to switch to a trend-based strategy. However, avoid trading reactions at the edges of the VWAP value area. This is counter-trend trading and has a lower chance of success. The market is driven in a specific direction, and your goal is to join that movement at the right time. Typically, you'll enter a trade when the price pulls back to the VAH or VAL, depending on the trend, or trade based on the POC in the direction of the trend. 
Once you start seeing the central VWAP line as a guide, you'll trade not only with the right type of trades, but also in the right direction. As the price moves away from the VAH lines during a trend, your goal is to wait until it gets closer to the value area boundaries. At that point, ideally in combination with an order block, you can use your trigger. On trending days, you can also use strategies like break of structure or change of character if you follow the smart money concept. Often, the trend weakens midday, and the central VWAP line begins to flatten. This is when price candles frequently start to overlap, signaling that the trend might be nearing its end. The third strategy is a combination of the first two. Here, you're no longer trading with the trend but focusing on reversals and returns to the mean line. For example, you might notice the price re-entering the value area, defined by DVAL and DVAH, then bouncing off back inside. This could be an entry point for a long position, aiming for the POC line. In this strategy, you're waiting for the price to return inside the value area, as no triggers for trend continuation emerge at the boundaries of DVAH and DVAL. Instead, as the VWAP line flattens, the price often breaks through the first deviation, then reverses back from the value area. It's important to mention that the third strategy is the most difficult to spot and execute. In the example, you can see how a flat VWAP shifts into a trending one, allowing us to switch back to the second approach. This involves trading price bounces in the direction of the trend indicated by the VWAP POC. Now that we've covered the theory, let's dive into some trade examples and triggers you can use. Since Adas is an advanced trading platform, we'll use more advanced triggers. Let's choose a cluster chart. Here's a gold chart where all three strategies come into play. You can see the flat VWAP, the trending VWAP, and then the flat VWAP again. During the flat phase, we trade the bounces off the value areas, like DVAH, in this case, DVH2 and DVAL2. Let's go back to the POC. Now that you can see the price moving quickly and the POC starting to slope, it's best not to short, as the priority is to follow the trend. In these situations, you should trade the bounce off the upper value area. However, once the price returns within the value area, we switch strategies and look for a return to the VWAP POC. Let's examine the triggers we can use. Here, you can see the price reacted to DVAH2 and created a red candle. It's important to pay attention to where the candle closed and where the POC is located. This level is highlighted by a rectangle in bold font. For a short position, we want the candle to close below the POC. At this point, you could enter a short trade, targeting the POC. This is your first entry point. It's also a good idea to check for any zeros on the bid side of the footprint at the top of the candle, as this indicates a finished auction. This means there's no interest in trading above that level. So, since the candle closed below its POC and had a finished auction above, this was a solid entry point for a short position with a target at the VWAP midpoint. Now, since we're on the opposite side of the VWAP, in the second value area, we look for a green candle that closed above its POC. As a bonus, it might also show a finished auction at the close. Here's that candle. It closed above the POC, which was right here. So this is our entry candle. We could place a stop loss a few ticks below the previous low marked by this red candle. Again, our target could be the POC. A shift in market dynamics is occurring now, moving from a non-trending period with a flat VWAP to a trending VWAP. In this case, we shift our focus away from the POC and instead look for bounces off the value area. Let's see where this happens. Here's the first example, and this is our entry point. This candle signals us to enter because it closed here, with the candle's POC below it. If we look at the zeros at the bottom of the candle, it shows there was no interest in trading below this level. We could enter the position here, placing a stop loss a few ticks below the candle, aiming for a new high or another resistance level. By the way, this presents another entry opportunity because you can see the bounce from the value area. The candle closed here, and the POC was here. Plus, we have a zero on the ask side of the candle. So, this gives you another chance to either enter if you missed the previous long entry or to add to your position, doubling your trade size. Here's another great example. You can see the bounce off the value area and the return to it. The candle closed here, with the POC at the bottom, and there's a zero on the ask side. So this was another entry point. You could have entered a position here or just added to your existing one. Then we see another bounce and another opportunity. We have a green candle after returning to the area, which is perfect for strategy number two, trend trading. 
This green candle closed here, with the POC below it. While it doesn't show signs of a finished auction, the previous candle does. This indicates the price created a low when there was no interest in trading below it, and then formed a green candle. So, we could have entered a long position and followed the trend. This could be another opportunity, and it's a great example because the first candle, this one, is not a good entry. You can see the body here, but the POC is located here and here. There are two POCs with the same values, for instance, 18 plus 72 gives the same result as 32 plus 58. That's why we have two. So, we won't enter a long position here, instead, we'll wait for the next candle. Here it is. A green candle. It closed at the top, and the POC is right here. Plus, as a bonus, there's a finished auction on the ask side. So, we'll go long here because again, the DDAH is still moving upward. Here, it's a different case, you wouldn't want to go long because the entire candle is already within the value area. At this point, we stop using the trend trading strategy. It's better to wait for the price to return to the DDAH from inside the zone. Also, notice that the value area is starting to flatten out, moving into a range. So, we wait for a red candle to close below its POC, which is when we enter a short position. If you placed a stop loss just above the high, it would get hit, so be cautious. However, you could still enter a short position again on this candle since it closed below the POC once more. And we have a zero on the bid side. So, we open a short position here and target the POC. Here we're also looking for a red candle while the candles are within the value area. We want a red candle that closed below its POC, ideally with a zero on the bid side as a bonus. So, we open a short position here and target the POC again. Next, we check the opposite side of the value area to see if there's any trigger for a long position. Looking ahead, we see a candle crossing the DVAL1. This is a green candle that closes here, with its POC right here. So, we enter a long position and target the POC. We could have closed the position on this candle, which nearly touched the POC. Although it would have closed later anyway, the key takeaway here is patience. And that's all. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your trading.